Here we are in Crown Heights, Brooklyn, New York. This is the Jewish shtetl of the 21st century. And it's a really, really exciting time of the year because we need to buy a lulav and esrik for the holiday. Check it out. These Jews go crazy about their lemons. What I'm holding in my hand is known as an esrik. Where do these grow? Italy. Italy? Yeah, yeah. Now, you don't have any counterfeit esrik in here, right? Not really. You're not like growing these in your backyard. Sold them out already. Well, is this esrig a lemon? That's my question. Well, I'm sorry. No, it's not a lemon. It comes from the same family, same citrus family, but it's definitely not a lemon. What? Who? As you see, we go down the table, the prices go up. We got $80. $100 for a lemon. Can I get $125? Yes. You can see that Srogim on this table have no price. And there's a reason for that. These are the Mercedes Benz of Srogim. I'm holding in my hand an asteroid that will sell for well over $1,500. That's it. I know you're thinking, what is going on here? So we're going to get some explanations. In my hand, I'm holding two asteroids. One is $125. The other one is $20. Why? Let's find out. We have, looking at the two Estragon over here, we have yeah. one which Hold it up close one to your which face. resembles a lot the one that the, that the Rebbe had. Uh -huh. The second one doesn't have as much. So give me, show, show me what, what resembles. So the, the Rebbe's they, They're both the same color. The Rebbe's Estragon, although it was bigger, closer to this size, it was even bigger than this, but it had more of a round top, and it goes it went down at the bottom, it was straighter. Uh -huh. And then this one is also a much cleaner Estragon than this one is. Uh -huh. So, so, so the more expensive uh, um, Esrogim have like a bigger, you know, they're like big build. They got big shoulders, small waist. Pretty much. But, but if it's if it's, it's upside, yeah, I mean, if it's a V-shaped um, uh, Esrog. But the other one, you're saying like oh, this guy, so this guy's a little uh, bottom heavy. Oh, and he's got, he's got a, a spot. Bit of dirt on him. So you see that little schmitzik on the top? Mm -hmm. That's called the pitum. Don't knock it up. I just put the two hundred dollar one with the twenty dollar one. Tell me how you how you feel. Yeah. Feel that chef. Uh huh. And uh, now now why don't you try on the other one? This one. Yeah. What's that make you feel? Strength. So you're gonna go with God. Beauty. Strength. Beauty. So how are you going to choose? Is it going to just be like eeny, meeny, miny, moe? It's dirt. Are you sure? Things are really happening. You could buy a sukkah right on the corner. Now the best deal you can get is on the street. How are you? Okay. Show me the nicest esrig you have on this table, please. The nicest one. Okay, that's on this table. This is a nice one. 150. 150. Okay, so what's nice about it? What's nice? It don't have a, a black spot. Okay. Uh, no bruise. Is a. It's clean. It's clean. It's clean. It's with a good shape. And. Uh, it's, a, it's called Calabria. It's a, it's so the Torah tells us to take a little of an asterisk on the holiday of Sukkot to make a blessing. Now if you were going to make a blessing for God, are you going to buy this little, this asterisk? Or a Mercedes asterisk? Is it, is it a Mercedes asterisk or a Ford asterisk? It's a Rolls Royce. We're right. Mercedes is a German car. We don't we don't know German. Corner, and as you can see, people are taking their lulav buying very, very seriously. They want to find the perfect angle. You ever see those guys on TV selling cars? You understand? Yes, yes. Saying that Hashem made such a perfect That's fruit That's right. in a field, in an orchard that has so many different rodents and things running around. But a bottom bottom line is how much does that cost? Only five hundred dollars. Really? Yes. You know what I take from all this? It's amazing to see how Jewish people are willing to do a mitzvah. They'll spend $500 on a fruit. Yes, yes, yes. 
This is a very oh, amazing thing. Week to make a blessing. One, and then what do you do with it at the end of the week? Maybe uh, make jelly. Varenia and jelly, maybe compost. So maybe hold the bottom the line is the people around here take their Judaism very well, seriously. Show me uh, what makes a nice lulav. I mean, they all look like sticks to me. It's, it should so, be more straight, you see? So a good lulav is a straight lulav. Yeah, a straight lulav. Uh huh. Is there anything else you're looking for? The middle should be. Ah, you want the top to be it all stuck be together. So you know, you know those Jews that really shake their lulav, they're, they're shaking their lulav yeah. and the whole thing comes apart, that's not a good thing to do. Definitely okay? It should be a strong lulav. So when you shake, you want to shake, but you don't want to go crazy. To show us a uh, not such a kosher lulav. Is everything okay down there? Yeah. Okay. See? Uh-huh. So hold, hold on. So you're saying the top's falling apart here? Yeah. Okay. So. So that's how you know if someone's trying to rip you off, if, if the top looks falling apart. Yeah. Okay, now honestly, do you think you have the best uh, best merchandise in town? Yeah. Like, like the, Nando, look across the street, like those guys. No, uh, the best, like, they don't know, right? No. Nah. We shouldn't go there. Who's your ice cream, Chuck? Advertisement. Is everything here kosher? Of course it's kosher. Uh-huh. Now, well... Everything is called a Mishra Kashalabad. Okay, you got it.